the Texas A&M Aggies are going to play for a national championship in Omaha, Nebraska. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefani. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. And yes, you heard that right, ladies and gentlemen. The Aggies are playing for a national championship. I mean, what? a night last night what a game you know i love when i say something and i say we need this to go like this and it goes exactly the way you want the aggies ended up playing florida not kentucky and you know when i i was saying i'd rather play florida then when florida just stomped kentucky in the morning i was like oh man i hope the Hope the bats aren't just having one of those days where they're just red hot. Um, but it was clearly just against Kentucky because they went away against the Aggies. I mean, what a performance. I also said, win the first game. Don't, you know, let whoever you play, obviously it ended up being Florida, force the if necessary game. Because if you force that if necessary game, it's just another, you know, Tennessee didn't, but it's just another game of pitching that you have to use, that you didn't want to use. Um, which So, I mean, everything that could have gone right for Texas A&M yesterday went right. And this baseball team is getting ready to play a best two or three series against the Tennessee Volunteers for a national championship. Um, I mean, I, I don't even know what else to say. This is just so exciting. I mean, this team, you lose – Monty, you're you're banged up. Coach Slaw said yesterday, uh, you know, shots playing banged up. Obviously, Jace is, is has that banged up ha- hammy. Um, I mean, you've got players just flat out banged up, but you're fighting through it, and you are two wins away from winning a national championship, which is insane. So, of course, you win 6-0 yesterday over Florida. Uh, Gavin Grohovac goes two for four, scores a run, knocks in our uh, RBI. Caden Thrill goes one for three with a homer. If three RBIs in the game, then you go. You got Caden Kent two for four, one uh, run scored, one RBI, and then the pitching, the pitching, ladies and gentlemen, was insane. The only only thing that went wrong with the pitching staff was was Cortez didn't have his best day when it came to to filling up the zone, but um, and only faced a couple batters, but. Justin Lampkin, I mean, five innings, three hits, no runs, nine strikeouts, one walk. I mean, I don't know what else. I don't know what else you can ask for from him. I mean, on top of getting five innings, no runs, only three hits. There weren't a lot of guys on base, obviously. You know, you got to walk and three hits. There's only four base runners in those five innings, nine strikeouts, wasn't even putting a lot of pressure on the defense. I mean, you know, that's just – so he got – let's think about it. He got 15 outs, right? So nine of them were strikeouts. Like, there wasn't a lot of pressure on the defense even. It, just an absolutely dominant, dominant start from Lampkin. Did a great job going deep into this one, helping his team save pitching. I mean, there's nothing more you could ask for from a starter than what happened in this game. Um, then Josh Stewart comes in two innings, no earned runs. Uh, I mean, just once again, another great performance. You get a couple innings there. You get a couple innings from Eschenbeck who gives you two innings, no runs, one strikeout. I mean, this, this was a beautifully pitched baseball game. It, it was one of those games. If you love pitching, which I do, it's, it's just fun to watch. It's fun to watch. Uh, and once again, I know, uh, Cortez came in and, and didn't have his best outing, but, um, you know, I mean, aside from that, this staff was dominant in this game. These three guys were absolutely dominant. They didn't give up anything. They didn't, they were putting pitches on the corners. The off-speed stuff was looking good. Everything you could ask for with a a performance from your pitching staff from from, from a couple guys was there. 
What an all-around elite, elite performance from from this team. And I just I couldn't be prouder of this pitching staff. Couldn't be prouder of this team. You know, it kind of did just feel like it felt like they were gonna lose. I don't know why. I was concerned that the Aggies were gonna lose yesterday and set up that if necessary game, which I thought they would win. But once again, the key to Omaha, to a regional, to a super regional, to all of baseball is saving your pitching. You always want to save your pitching. You want to have your pitching, um, you know, ready to go. Have use as few pitchers as possible. This is whether it's a normal weekend series, three game series, or it's the postseason. You have to save pitching, conserve pitching. And I think this whole postseason, the Aggies have done an incredible, incredible job with their pitching. I think they've done a great job not having to burn guys and not having to use guys early and, you know, lots of stuff there. I, I just, I was so happy with this performance from the pitching staff. Um, and I mean, a, a game where not a, not a ton of hits. And what was the total amount of hits? Let me look that up. Like, what was it, probably seven, eight? Let's see. Um, yeah, you only had six hits, and you're able to to get the win. You know, that's – that's I love a game like that. Six hits, six runs. It, it, it's just all around a great performance. Now, five walks from um, Florida pitching will help you out a little bit there, but there is nothing more you could ask for in this game. So now – I'm trying to think when Prager is going to start. So he started. What day was that? Was that Monday? It was again. It was against Kentucky. That was Monday, right? Yes. He started on Monday. The first game of this is on Saturday. So this will be. This will be the. Um, what do you call it? The what's interesting? So you know, normally. College starters get seven days if, because if you got a Friday night starter, he pitches on Friday, then he pitches the next Friday. So you get a full week off. So if I had, do you throw, I, I think you have to throw Prager on Friday. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, on, on the Saturday game, the first game of the College World Series or of the of the final series is on Saturday. Yep, Saturday at 6.30. So, you know, I think you throw Prager on Saturday, right? I, I, that would give them basically Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It, it'd be like a like a MLB start. You, know, you get five days off. Um, you could hold them to Sunday, but winning game one is so valuable. You have got to win game one, and. I think that's why I, if he's able to do it, I'd throw Prager on, um, on on Saturday. Now, let's see how many pitches he threw against Kentucky. He threw. Let's see if this, if ESPN will even tell you this. Oh, it does. He threw ninety five pitches. Okay, and that's what I thought. You know, if he would have gotten up to that one twenty, which sometimes in the postseason coaches let pitchers go a little bit, but. If he would have would have been in that 120 range, I would have said you maybe got to hold him to Sunday. But 95, I, I think he'll be good to go on on Saturday. So that that's going to be interesting. Um, let me know what y'all think in in the YouTube comments on that. Does he uh, does Prager start Saturday or Sunday? I just think winning game one once again, and this is something I, I every time I, I've talked about this baseball team all season long, I've talked about how winning game one of a series is so valuable. So, so valuable. I mean, it's, that's not you know, rocket science to say you'd rather need to go um, win one of your next two than have to win them both if you lose game one. So um, I think if, if Prager can go game one, I'd go with him. I, I didn't see um, if, if Coach Sloss said that in the post game. Um, I saw him talking about, you know, players are banged up and, and um, you know, it's, we're, we're getting to that point of the season where where everybody's hurt and you're just trying to, to push through the finish line and, 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 and see what you can do. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, 
The Aggies are playing for a national championship this weekend. Game Saturday, Sunday, then of course the if necessary game on Monday. This is really exciting, and I know this team's banged up, but they're playing good baseball. They're pitching the ball well. Texas A&M very well could win a national championship, and I am absolutely excited, stoked to watch this final series against a really good Tennessee ball club. I'm excited. I know y'all are too. Let's hear something. Let me know in the comments, ladies and gentlemen, how are we feeling? Are we excited? I mean, you got to be pumped up. I know I am. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about some position battles on the football field. I said I wanted to talk more about this this week in a longer conversation, so we're going to have that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to you as customers. So I want to talk a little bit about the position battles that I'm most excited about, you know, as we get deeper into the summer and, and the football season truly does approach. Let's look at this. How far away are we from the start of the season? We got the rest of you about, you know, tw about 10 days left in June. We got July. We've got two months and ten days, basically. That's really, really exciting, ladies and gentlemen. We're we're getting closer than you think to football season, and 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 it's this is very, very exciting. Um, but so position battles that I'm really anxious to see how they play out. So the first one is that second linebacker spot. We know Terry York is going to be out there, but who is going to be next to him. And, you know, it's, I believe it's going to be a transfer. I'm starting, you know, this is one. I could see this going so many different ways. Could it be the shields? Could it be Scooby Williams? I, I think that there's some of the guys that were on the roster last year. Some of the guys that have been around for a little while, but I just think it's been one of those two guys. I, I think that, Looking at this, you know, you've got the Shields, who obviously has, you know, D1. I mean, not D1, you know, uh, power, used to be, when he was there, power five um, experience. And now, of course, you've got Scooby Williams, who has SEC experience playing over at Florida. Um, and so, whichever one ends up getting, winning this role, well, my sneeze. Nope, maybe not. Whichever of these two guys ends up um, winning this role, I think that they're going to have a really solid season. I think both of these guys can play. I think both of these guys are really good players. Um, and so which one of them wins it? I'll be honest with you. I, for a while, I thought it was Scooby. Now, that was before you went and got to Shields. You kind of got to Shields a little bit late. Now you go and you get to Shields, and it's like, man, who, who's going to start there? I mean, this is a really interesting and intriguing battle. I've seen some people say in Scooby. I've seen some people say in Shields. So it's going to go one way or another, and I'm, I'm really anxious to see how this kind of works itself out. I think the next most interesting position battle for me is a little bit of the center and the guard position. You know, I, I think we feel – we feel pretty confident with the tackles. I think pretty confident, not fully confident, pretty confident. Obviously, you know, Zoom's going to be out there. But um, so, you know, who's playing center? 
Is it Kali, the transfer from Utah? Is it Mark Naboo? Then you've got, you know, uh, on the inside, you've got Armand Reed Adams, the transfer. There's just a lot of guys who are fighting for a role, especially on the interior. You know, wh which where does uh, Basantis play? Does, is he inside? Does he go outside? Where is he going to play? Um, you just have so many battles along the offensive line. I think the only position really that – now, honestly, I feel pretty good about the left side of the offensive line being Zune and Armage Reed Adams. But, you know, then who plays guard and tackle? You know, and it's funny. I think a, a lot of people want Basantis to move inside, but I would not be upset – if the offensive line, and I've talked about why I want Kali to play center so you can use Naboo at guard, I would not be upset if the offensive line was Trey Zune, Armaj Reed Adams. This is left to right. So uh, Trey Zune, Armaj Reed Adams, Kali, Naboo, and then Basantis over um, on the outside to the right. And I know there's some that want Basantis to come back inside and play guard. And I don't, I don't hate that at all. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm fine with that, but I just, I think that he can develop as a tackle. You've got to remember that Basantis was a true freshman last season. You know, he's playing as a true freshman. And I think that you need to realize that he's going to develop more um, and he's going to be, going to be solid in that role. I want to look up and see how, um, I don't know. I don't know Chase Basantis's. I want to see. I, need to, I want to look at his his yeah six six three twenty. I, I, I thought so. I just want to make sure he can play tackle. That that's a, that's a, a tackle frame there. Um, I wouldn't mind leaving him at tackle. Uh, you know, and I know this is all, it's only been conversations about where they where he's going to play this year. But that's what I would do. So I think that more interesting than anything is the is, is the interior battle on the offensive line, but. I just think for the most part, th this whole offensive line is really interesting. I, I mean, you know, as I said, the only one that you can feel really, really, really confident in is um, I think that you, know, you got Zoom on, on, on the uh, protecting Carter Ravens blind side. That's the only, f I think, surefire thing there. So that's going to be really interesting. And then, um, and then honestly, you've got two more here. You got corner. Um, I think safety is a little bit interesting too, but. Not as interesting. I'm not, at corner, I, I still, I mean, like, seriously, it's like, as we just don't know who's going to start a corner for the Aggies. I mean, it could be so many different guys. It could be players that were on the team last year. Could it be like a Javon Thomas who was on the team last year? Or is it going to be all these transfers? Are you going to see all of these, of these guys that Coach Elko brought in? Are you going to see them um, start? And, and this position battle is, is so intriguing to me and so interesting. And I, I still I still think you're going to see a lot of transfers out there. You know, Coach Elko's talked about how he believes there's going to be, I think, what was it, like seven or eight or nine something. Um, I'll have to look back up that quote. But a transfer start for this team. And then he said there's going to be like 17 transfers getting um, playing relevant snaps and, you know, really being out on the field. So, um, and I think – a good chunk of that group is going to be a corner. Um, so that's one to monitor. And then the last one, and this is one we have, I, we've discussed more than any of these others, I believe, but it's the running back room. I think that the battle for who is the RB1 between, and I, who I, and I believe it'll be between Ruben Owens and Le'Veon Moss. I don't know if, it, if I'm convinced that, um, that Amari is going to be mixed in that. So, Ah, and I think he's a good player. I just think I think the upside for Ruben Owens and Le'Veon Moss is so good. I think that can be one of the best tandems at the running back position in the SEC, maybe in all of college football. So um, I still I still lean Ruben Owens, just barely. I barely, barely, barely still lean Ruben Owens, but I think there's a legitimate chance that he takes over as the guy. But if not, once again, I, I mean, Le'Veon Moss is such a great running back. If he wins this job, you're not going to see tears from me. I'm going to be – because I think this is truly – I'm like 51%, 49% that I think Ruben Owens is going to be a guy. It's not like I'm over here saying Ruben Owens 
to 20% from Moss. He's the guy. It's not like that. We are talking this is really, really close. So those are the position battles that I think I, that we should be monitoring closest here at Locked on Aggies. So let me know in the YouTube comments which position battles are y'all most intrigued by. All right. I want to talk about something weird. I want to I want, I want to talk about something I, I, something I've said, and I want to see if um, y'all agree or disagree. So I've made the claim multiple times that Nick Scorton will outperform Walter Nolan. Let me know in the YouTube comments y'all's thoughts on this. I'm going to justify it coming up right here, unlocked on Aggies. So now this is not a, you know, I'm not doing this. I know that Walter Nolan transferred, but still we, um, you know, he, we're not, we're not doing this out of, Oh, you know, why'd you leave, man? We got seen, you know, we're not doing that, but this is, I mean, this is a genuine take I have. And so it's not like, well, he transferred. So we're going to say mean things about Walter Nolan. That's not what we're doing here. I, I just, I truly believe impact wise, Impact. Now, you've got to remember that um, Walter Nolan, you know, obviously plays a little bit more tackle um, th than Scorton, who plays the you know end. But still, um, but you know, Walter Nolan's obviously a versatile player. He can play all over the defensive line, but that's you know, primary. But I just I have a feeling. So, and I wanted to say the position stuff because it, the the numbers are going to be a little bit different. But I have a feeling that when it comes to impact, Walter Nolan does not outperform Nick Scorton. I think that Nick Scorton, as I've said time and time and time again here at Locked On Aggies, as you ever dares know, I've said that I think that Nick Scorton will be one of the best defensive players in the SEC this season. Um, and, you know, I think that he has a legit chance for double-digit sacks. And, then, you know, I've seen some people comment, which is a great point, but – well, Andrew, you know, what if he's getting double teamed all the time? Well, I've got two comments for that. A, this, the reality of this is if you're if you're that good of a player, if you're going to be this marquee player for, on the defense, you've got to be able to beat some double teams here and there. But I'll also say that that means he's taking blockers away and letting other linemen, linebackers, you know, whoever's blitzing get after the quarterback. So. I just think, you know what I mean? And, and I just have this feeling that, and I wish, I wish we had Nick Scorton and Walter Nolan. Once again, I'm not, I don't want people to think I'm just doing this out of, out of, um, you know, spite of, of, of Walter Nolan leaving that. Cause that's not true. You know, best of luck to him. I, no, no issue. We understand coaching change goes somewhere else. It's, it's part of football, but I just think you're going to see Nick Scorton really put up the, a, a type of season that you go, Man, we lost a star on the defensive line, but we got one. We got another one. And I um, you know, I've talked about it. I think there's a world where, I mean, you know, the NFL loves pass rushers. I think there's a world where you see Nick Scorton turn himself into a first round pick with what he does this season. So um, that'll be really interesting. I, I think we should dive deeper into this because it's just a fun conversation. It's like you lost a star on the defensive line. Could this guy be a new star and um and kind of plug the hole left by the elite defensive lineman who left to go play for Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. But let me know in the YouTube comments y'all's thoughts. Do you believe there's a chance this happens? Do you disagree? Do you think this is crazy? I want to hear everybody's thoughts on this conversation in the YouTube comments. And once again, everybody leave a comment talking about the baseball team. Proud of this team. Congrats to this team. They are a couple wins away from potentially being national champions. We will break down this Tennessee team tomorrow. We'll talk about, you know, what to watch out for. We'll talk about pitching staff, talk about everything that we'll, we'll give a full-on scouting report on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Aggies. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. Really, really do appreciate it. Hope everybody has an outstanding rest of their day today. Enjoy what's going on with the baseball team. If you got any friends at work who are Texas fans or whatever, make fun of them. You have the right to do it. Really excited to see if this team can win it all. Hope everybody has a great rest of your day, and we will see you on Friday.